Today we're going to talk about trace minerals. What is a trace mineral? Well, trace minerals are part of the periodic table, which has all the elements that make up the physical universe. So all the matter that makes up things, whether it's uh, the soil, the plants, human bodies, animals, everything is made from elements. And you have these things called trace elements, which are minerals needed in very, very trace or small amounts, very tiny amounts. Another term for that would be micro minerals versus macro minerals, which you need in larger amounts, like usually above hundred milligrams. So trace minerals are needed in tiny amounts, definitely below hundred milligrams, but sometimes even in the microgram amounts. So they're very, very tiny. The macro minerals make up about, I don't know, three to 4% of your entire body. And the micro minerals make up only like 0.02%. Now, just because we need trace minerals in very, very tiny amounts doesn't mean that they're not extremely important. They are. If a plant, if an animal, if a human is missing just one trace mineral and they have all the other trace minerals, there could be huge side effects. So we're only as strong as our weakest link. Now, I want to give you another definition of the word organic. Typically, when people think of organic, they think of um, without pesticides, but there's another definition of the word organic, and that has to do with a plant-based mineral. So you have inorganic minerals in the soil, like elements, like whether it's iron, uh, magnesium, potassium, and these basically come from rocks in the soil. So certain microorganisms like fungus release acids that then dissolve rocks that then allow these tiny minerals to be absorbed by the plant's roots. So we have this nice exchange between minerals and carbs and proteins. So the plant's roots then pull up this mineral and convert it from an inorganic mineral to an organic mineral. So now the plant-based mineral is in a certain form that's very easy to manipulate. Um, and then when you consume minerals from plants, they're very easy for your body to digest and assimilate versus eating a teaspoon of dirt. Okay. These are inorganic elements that are not easily absorbed by our body. So we need them in a form that um, is easy to break down and utilize. When people think about trace minerals, they think uh, nails, skin, hair, right? But they don't realize that trace minerals go way, way beyond that. We have the big function of acting as a coenzyme or a co-helper uh, element. So trace minerals help make enzymes, okay? And there are thousands and thousands of different types of enzymes that our body needs for various things that have nothing to do with digestion. That might have something to do with growing hair. They might have something to do with pumping certain fluids to the body or part of your immune system, killing off pathogens. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And so to make these proteins, you need certain trace minerals. You also need trace minerals many times to make vitamins. Like let's take B12. B12 needs cobalt, okay, as the trace mineral. And without cobalt in the soil, you can't make B12 and you become anemic. So we need the complete package of trace minerals uh, without anything missing. Let me first explain some of the macro minerals uh, first, okay? Just so you can differentiate the two. Like potassium, for example, we need massive amounts of potassium. That would be a macro mineral. Calcium, sodium, chloride, magnesium, phosphorus, sulfur. Those are all minerals we need in large amounts, okay? Now the micro minerals would be like iron, zinc, iodine, selenium, copper, chromium, boron, molybdenum, try to say that five times. So that would be a short list of trace minerals. There's many others, but I wanted to kind of talk about the common ones. Now, when someone is deficient in a trace mineral, it is hard to differentiate what trace mineral is causing that deficiency because just one trace mineral could be involved with hundreds of different enzymes like zinc, for example. And so if your body has a small amount of zinc, it might use it in the most important functions, but not in a lot of the other functions that you might not have any connection that that's associated with. Because how do you feel that your DNA is not being properly manufactured? Or how do you always feel that all the neurotransmitters aren't in the perfect balance? It's difficult. 
So it's just another reason why you just need to eat healthy to include all these trace minerals. Let's first talk about iron, okay? You need iron in very small amounts, like between eight and 15 milligrams per day as a requirement, uh, especially women that uh, menstruate. They need more because they're losing iron on a regular basis. But over 2 billion people on this planet are deficient in iron. That's incredible. That's a lot of people. But iron is involved in oxygen transport. It's also involved in the storage of oxygen in your muscles. It's involved in producing energy, making DNA, supporting the immune system, making myelin, the, the stuff that surrounds the nervous system, also in making neurotransmitters. Okay, that's what iron does. Iron is very plentiful, especially in the form that you need in red meat, organ meats, shellfish, okay, seafood, nuts, seeds, and chocolate. Iron also is absorbed easier in the presence of vitamin C. So if you were gonna have a steak in a salad, for example, you have this red meat, which has a great source of iron, and your salad has a good source of vitamin C, that would be a perfect uh, meal to help maximize the uh, absorption of iron. Now, if someone's anemic, uh, some of the best supplements that you could take would be like a, maybe a grass-fed bovine iron supplement, a grass-fed bovine liver, okay, extract, because liver is a really good source of iron, or you could do a grass-fed uh, bovine spleen extract, okay, that's another really good uh, supplement for iron versus some of the uh, supplements that you find, which I won't mention any brand names, but they have the form of iron in an element, you know, much like you would, you would find in the soil. Not a good type of iron that you want to take because uh, the side effects, you're, you'll find that your digestive system will be hurting. So I would never recommend taking an iron supplement unless it's like a, either a food base or it's something like liver or spleen extract, things like that. Now, tannins in tea and even coffee can um, block the absorption of iron. But the, the big reason why so many people are deficient in iron is because of phytates or phytic acid. And that's in grains because of such a large population on this planet consumes grains and so-called healthy grains. That phytic acid blocks the absorption of iron, making people very anemic. Now there's other causes of deficiency too. Let's say, for example, people have an infection with a parasite and they have uh, bleeding and things like that. That can be a, a problem with iron, but the big thing is the phytic acid because they're eating grains. So some of the symptoms of an iron deficiency would be uh, anemic, that you're gonna be tired, kind of washed out, lethargic, hair loss, you're gonna feel colder. Uh, you, you can have this condition called pica, which you're craving dirt or chalk, something like that, or, or even clay, uh, or low libido. Other than that, you'd be totally fine. All right, let's go move on to zinc. Uh, as far as how much zinc you need between eight and 13 milligrams, very small amounts. 31% of the world's population uh, is deficient in zinc, according to certain uh, reports. Now that's a lot of people. Now, can you guess why they're deficient in zinc? If you've guessed exposure to phytic acid, you are correct. It's the grains. Grains are loaded with phytic acid, which then blocks certain minerals, iron, zinc, calcium, things like that. Now, right now I'm living on a farm and we have animals, we have chickens, pigs, we have sheep, we have goat, and I'm feeding them some non-GMO grain. What I do is I soak those grains for three days. It gets rid of all the phytic acid and these animals thrive. They do great. So there's no phytic acid. So they get this maximum absorption of trace minerals, including zinc and iron and calcium, not to mention the enhanced B vitamin profile as well. So, but for humans, I don't recommend consuming grains. All right, zinc, probably the most important trace mineral ever because it's involved in hundreds and hundreds of different enzymes. It's involved in making DNA, involved in making amino acids. It's very, very important for your immune system, making T cells, uh, bone health, producing sperm, wound healing, uh, helping in the regulation of inflammation, especially in your lungs. If you're deficient in zinc, uh, you can get an ulcer. You can have a loss of taste, 
loss of smell, loss of appetite. It can affect your mood where you're very irritable. It can also increase your susceptibility of getting certain viruses, okay, of the lung. It can really crash your libido. And the type of zinc that you want, um, the, the, the type that's easily absorbed is in red meat. Uh, this is why vegans are usually deficient. Uh, it's in organ meats, shellfish. See, we come back to the shellfish. Shellfish has pretty much all the trace minerals because it's from the ocean, right? All right, and then pumpkin seeds do have a good amount of zinc. Uh, as a side note, when you consume zinc with protein, uh, you're going to get more absorption. All right, let's move to iodine next. Iodine, very important. You need about 120 to 220 micrograms, okay? Not milligrams, micrograms. And this is another trace mineral that a lot of people are deficient. Like 1.9 billion people on this planet are deficient in iodine. And 36.4% and of that group is children, okay? So if a child is deficient in iodine, uh, they'll have a diminished uh, intelligence. They have a lower cognitive uh, function. Their growth is stunted. So it's very, very important for both pregnant women and small children to get enough iodine, okay? Uh, now, if you're consuming food from the ocean, you're gonna be good to go, like seaweed, shellfish, uh, sea salt, things like that. Now, eggs have iodine as well. Beef liver has a good amount of iodine. But if you don't have iodine, your thyroid can't work. So you can't make thyroid hormones. When you talk about the thyroid hormone like T4, or T3, you're talking about the, the number of iodine molecules in that hormone, okay? T4 is the inactive version. T3 is the active version. And so you need iodine to make these hormones. And if you don't have enough iodine, your metabolism is slow. You get a lot of pregnancy complications, okay? Stillbirth, you might get miscarriages, things like that. Um, iodine also regulates an excess amount of estrogen. So if you have too much estrogen in the body, um, you take enough iodine, you can help regulate that. Um, a really good indication for the need of iodine would be fibrocystic breast ovarian cyst. Iodine will help get rid of both of those conditions. Also, if you're cold on the cold side, um, you need more iodine usually. All right, let's move to selenium. Selenium is another trace mineral needed in small amounts, like 40 to 70 micrograms. Over a billion people are deficient in selenium. And so selenium is needed in certain um, proteins like the selenioprotein enzyme, which helps to detoxify mercury. Also, selenium is involved in DNA synthesis and decreasing inflammation because it's involved in antioxidants, okay? Selenium is also needed for reproduction. It's needed in the conversion from T4 to T3. Without selenium, you can't convert the thyroid hormones. So even though you have enough hormone there, it can't be activated. Selenium is a really powerful antioxidant for your liver, okay? And uh, how do you get selenium? Seafood, shellfish, organ meats. Seems like those three types of foods are at the top of the list for trace minerals. Also, br Brazil nuts. One Brazil nut a day will give you enough selenium. Uh, beef has selenium, eggs, and of course, beef liver is loaded with selenium, which is an organ meat, which I've already mentioned. Okay, myalgia, that's muscle pain in the lower part of your body is an indication that you need selenium. Cardiomyopathy, that's a heart problem. Uh, you need selenium for that. It's, it's an antioxidant. Um, if you're lethargic, sometimes you're deficient in selenium. And if you have these white nail beds, that means you need selenium. All right, let's talk about chromium. You need between 15 and 45 micrograms, not milligrams, of chromium every single day. Chromium enhances insulin and it's involved as a cofactor in the production of insulin. So it's really important in blood sugars. And when you're on a high carb diet, the need for chromium goes way up because high amounts of sugar deplete you of chromium. You're gonna find chromium in vegetables, beef, ham, egg yolks, fish, yeast, shellfish. We keep coming back to that. If you're deficient in chromium, you have a greater tendency to have insulin resistance, a slower metabolism, polycystic ovarian syndrome. Why? Because 
insulin is involved in polycystic ovarian syndrome. Peripheral neuropathies, why? Because peripheral neuropathies are involved with blood sugar issues. Also, uh, chromium helps to keep cholesterol out of the arteries, okay? So if you don't have enough chromium, uh, cholesterol can, tends to stay in the arteries. Um, why? Because insulin is involved, again, and insulin and chromium tend to work together. Let's talk about copper. Copper is needed in small amounts as well, like 900 micrograms. That's under one milligram, okay? Now, copper works with iron to make red blood cells. Copper also works with zinc as a part of your immune system and many other functions. Now, copper deficiency is very, very rare unless you're in a hospital after getting surgery when it's very, very common. So apparently we need copper in the healing process. Copper is needed for connective tissue. It's needed for your blood vessels because it's needed for collagen um, production. White blood cells need copper. Um, and copper acts as a dimmer switch within your neurons. And so they help to uh, modify the overactivity of nerve signals. And if you're deficient in copper, you're going to be fatigued. You're going to be weak. You're going to be frequently sick. You're going to have uh, poor memory. You're going to have poor vision. You're going to be on the cold side. And you can get copper in many different things. Uh, beef liver, shellfish, cashews, uh, mushrooms, chocolate, and avocados. So now that you know a little bit about trace minerals, if you haven't seen my uh, video on electrolytes, that's the next one to watch. Check it out. It's right here.